and welcome to another episode of Full Bar. In today's episode, I want to talk about storing your project configuration. Yes, you ask a lot about this, so I want to create a series of videos to answer all your questions. If you're interested in watching more content about serverless, cloud computing, or software engineer practices in general, subscribe to my channel in the red button below. I post a video every Tuesday. So let's get started. <laughs> Some time ago, a video about environmental variables solving very, very simple problem. And there you ask a lot of questions and you keep on asking me questions about storing configuration and storing variables and how to do that. So I decided to create a set of videos to answer those questions and to help you to store properly your configuration in your serverless project. I think a lot of the things that I will show here can apply to any other project, not only serverless. So in today's video, we are just going to talk about what is the problem and what are the things we are going to solve in the next video. So I want to set up like initial playlist video. So I want to talk about the problems of configuration and why you should care. And then I will let you know what are the videos that I will be working on during the month of October. So let's start talking about what is the configuration of your software. So the configuration is something different from the code. So that's important to have in mind. You have the code and you have the configuration. You know what is the code, but what is the configuration? So the configuration, I think there are like two definitions or there are two types of configuration. I would say that is the configuration that changed between uh, environments. So if you have development, there is different configuration than for production. And then there is the configuration that is like your business logic configuration. So parameters that you want to have somewhere um, outside of your code that uh, you are going to use from your code. So for example, the amount of students in a classroom, you may refer to that constant all around your code, but uh, you don't need it to have it outside and it doesn't change between uh, different environments. In development might be the same amount of students in a class that you will have in production. But when you are talking about different uh, types of configuration depending on the environment, for example, this is the name of your table, of your DynamoDB table. Your table in development is different from your table in production. I want to show you different ways to tackle the first type of configuration, that is the configuration that changes between different environments and you can also use that type of configuration as well, like some of the things I will show you there to help you with your constants in your project. But I will focus on the one that changed on the environment. So for production and development, there are different configurations. As I say, code and configuration are different things and it's very, very, very important that they are separated. You should never store configuration in your code and there are many reasons why you should not do it. First reason is that Lots of configuration is secret. So if you store your secrets in your code, they might leak outside because you put it in GitHub or you have it in a different file that you said, I won't commit it, but then in order to do the automated deployment, you need to commit that configuration and it can get leaked. So that's one of the things that might, um, it's very, very important not to have in your code. Secrets needs to keep be secret forever. So configuration and code needs to be separate. Also, as I said, there must be different configuration for different environments. So if you have your code and your configuration all mixed together, you might have to do state in your code to manage what configuration to use in each case. So you don't want that. You don't want to have an if else deb do blah, 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 and if else prod do blah, blah, blah. No, you want that. It doesn't matter where you're running your code. The code is exactly the same for all the environments. So that's why you need to separate your code and your configuration. And also you want to have your code separated from your configuration because you might use the same, I don't know, table name in multiple projects. So if you have it all around your code and then you change it in some kind of, in the project that created that table, then you need to go into the code and find and replace and, and it's just a mess. You don't want to do that. So it's very important to separate the code and the configuration. So whenever you change the table name, you can change it pretty easily everywhere where it's impacted. 
In a previous video, I showed you how to use the Parameter Store that is a managed service from AWS to store parameters. And there you mentioned that there were uh, problems because those parameters were not encrypted, so the secrets were not stay secret. So I want to show you how to use that Parameter Store with encryption. So that's one of the videos I'm going to do for this series that you asked for. The next problem of the Parameter Store I think is pretty serious and that's the problem of um, not being able to change the value of a parameter after the function is deployed. So we put, we connect the parameter store parameter with the code and then the parameter change and then we need to redeploy the function. So if that parameter impacts in many different functions and in many different projects, we need to track down which are all the projects using that parameter to redeploy them and it's a mess. So we don't want to do that. And in this series of videos, I will show you how to fetch those parameters every time they change. So from the parameter store, so we keep on using it, but you will need to do some other things. I will show you how to solve that problem. Also to solve the non-encrypted th problem of the parameter store, I also created a video about the secret manager. But for me, the secret manager has one big problem that is very expensive. It costs like 40 cents of a euro each secret when the parameter store is free. Parameter store has uh, problems, but, but I think in general it works pretty well. And I think having uh, 0, 40 cents of a euro per every time you're storing a secret is kind of expensive. Sure, it rotates and it does a lot of magic for you, but if you're not using the RDS, that it handles the rotation automatically, then you can create a Lambda that will do the rotation and you can use the parameter store for doing the rotation because you still need to create the Lambda in the secret manager. So I want to show you how to use the, uh, the parameter store with encryption, not the secret manager. Got that already a video and I will link it somewhere here. So if you're interested, you can check it out. Another thing I want to show you in this series of videos is how to uh, do the serverless framework project nice and clear and with these different types of configuration and how you will then deploy that using a GitLab pipeline. So I will want to show you through the whole process of having your encrypted values, having your uh, parameter store, getting refreshed every time they change, how to write your code really nice and tidy in uh, in your serverless framework project, how to take advantage of that, and then how to deploy to GitLab and create a GitLab pipeline that will deploy automatically to the dev environment if we are in one branch or to production environment if we are in another branch and everything will happen automatically. So I already created a video on GitLab, but there was no environments there. So I want to upgrade that video and that will be the last video on the month of October. So we will have a nice series of five videos, including this one to uh, manage your configuration and your environments in your serverless framework project. So encryption, then fetching the parameters as soon as they change, then we will have how to manage your uh, serverless framework project with different types of parameters and so everything is kind of code the code is agnostic of the environment and then the configuration can change and then i will show you how to create a gitlab pipeline so that's what you have to expect in october this was the video for today i hope you like it this was more like an introduction of all the problems we are going to solve in october because during those videos i will not step into the why we are doing this. So this is the video for that. If you have any problems with deployment or configuration management or environment, just let me know in the comment box below that you would like to see some content related to this. And as you see, I always come and reply to your comments, maybe not physically reply to your comments, but if you ask for some video, I come and try to create that content for you because you're the ones that are will enjoy it and I love making content that you like watching. Around here there are other videos from my channel for you to watch, so go ahead and click and if not, I see you in the next episode of Ubar. Ciao ciao!